Hey guys, I'm Jonah to the case, and today we are carrying on with our Ogre Kingdoms campaign. Uh, not that we're really in the Ogre Kingdoms, are we? No, we're, we're stomping across the Empire, which I think is better. I prefer the Empire to the Mountains of Mourne. It's a lot more hospitable, and there's a lot more, uh, <laughs> there's a lot more to eat, I'd say. All of these cities, cities just bustling with food. Marvellous. So, uh, we are going to... Yeah, we'll actually get that. That sounds good. Uh, so we have uh, Greg Bat Magri looking after our, our so poor old die. camp. Now, one thing I am wondering is, can I get a hero and then embed it in a camp? Because I feel like that's something you could do, but I've not bothered to ever look. Although I also feel like maybe you can't, because... I don't know. I actually have no idea. I don't know what the rules are here. So I think I'm going to investigate that. I'm sure someone can already tell me, you know. Uh, I'm pretty sure, actually, yeah, I, th I think a lot of you are actually playing the game now, as of this going live. I think a lot of you will be already playing. So I hope you're enjoying it. And uh, anyway, let's crack on. So, a little bit of this, a pinch of that, and a touch of the other, and stand well back. Magic by fighting. Brilliant. Power recharge when engaged in melee. Uh, right, let's also get Prophet of the Great Moor so we can get cooldown on spells Thank you, as well. Mouth. You're Thank welcome. You. you are most welcome. I'm I'm the Godmouth, I've decided. So yeah, we have a bunch of uh, food coming to fight us, which is annoying. They say don't play with your food, but they're humans and they don't know anything about playing with food. We, we play with food. We're ogres. Okay, that's our thing. That's what we do. We play with our food. And we have a lot of food. So I welcome them to come play with us. And Nicholas Wagner has decided to come commit suicide. Bye. Bye, bunny. Die on me. Oh, nope. Are that didn't me? do it, apparently. We really need to hunt you down further. Really. Uh, so I could go for Marienburg. Marienburg is the largest port. Uh, in the old world, so that's a good one to go and take over. That is a good one to go and take over. So I think we're going to. I know, I know, we have some problems over here, but I don't really care. I'm sure it'll be fine, and if it's not, so be it. Uh, extra growth and casualty replenishment rate in Isleheart. I did, now I never thought of getting that. I don't know why. That I. I guess we just had that when we built the place originally. Um, what else could I get? Put down corruption, a few other bits and bobs. I think just garrison sounds good to me for now. So the orthodoxy dominates. That doesn't really bother me. I don't really care what our food is up to. Uh, protection racket. Something could happen, you know. You wouldn't want there to be an accident now, would ya? No, you wouldn't. Um... So we have a protection racket, which means we're getting some extra income from all of our buildings. And Nicholas Wagner's dead, and that means Midland is gone. Goodbye. We also got a Jade Lion. Interesting. Very interesting. Uh, we must have got this from Cathay, somehow. How did we get this? Did we get it from that guy? I guess we did. A living statue crafted from a block of Jade. The Lion is a conduit of sorcery and can improve the morale of any friendly units in its vicinity. So leadership plus 10 and Jade Lion gives immune to psychology for 35 meters so long as you're in melee. That's pretty cool actually. That works out quite well for something like this lad. Uh, though it, oh, it goes in this slot, does it? Oh, forest spotting is sort of stupid. Let's get a Jade Lion. That's way cooler. That's way cooler for him. Uh, and we have a cannibal totem. We should equip that. So yeah, we should give that to someone. Like for 10 weapon strength and 10 melee attack. I mean, we could put that cannibal totem on Scrag and just give him an extra 10 melee attack and 10% weapon strength. That would be awesome. Right, so are we going to go over here? So Marienburg, amazingly, has a much better um, sort of nation than uh, much of the other people do. I mean, look at this. Like, that's a whole Altdorf. It's a three... Settlement province, Middenheim, a three settlement province, and then somehow Marienburg, four settlement province. Even though Marienburg is basically the only settlement in in the wasteland worth a damn. Like seriously, it, it, everything else is just disparate little towns and things. Nothing you could even call a city. So 
pretty pretty surprising that they somehow have the largest province. Feels a bit peculiar. But it is what it is. So let's come burn it down. Uh, Emil von Corden. It's going to be chilling here. Marienburg has a terrible garrison. Come on, guys. Please, please focus on your garrisons. This is getting silly. But hopefully we'll have a port here and we'll earn some good money out of it. That would be nice. <laughs> we should we should get back to Old Dorf at some point. He says it's not possible, but I, I reckon Never. it probably is. I reckon it probably is. Uh, so, we have access to some good buildings now, such as the Mineral Seam, where we can get some lead belchers. We can also get Mornfang Cavalry if we get the Mornfang Cage. So, I mean, there's some very good stuff here. I also... Let's see, there's Hunters there. And here we go. Let's see if we get this one. Meat gained from uh, battles in the Circle of Influence. If we build this up, we can get to Gut Henge, which gives us Butchers, which I quite like. How do we get... Yeah, okay, so we, we want Camp Oven with the fire bellies, because I think that's more fun than the butchers. Because I really love Laura Fire, frankly. And I do want to head towards the Iron Blaster that currently, uh, I'm still in the pre-release build, recording this. As I am with all my series running at the moment, uh, still the pre-release build. But the Iron Blaster is super overpowered at the moment. Um, so I can't wait to play with it. <laughs> It'll be a lot of fun. Because yeah, I don't mind. I don't mind things being overpowered when I'm playing a single player campaign. May as well enjoy it, right? It's fun having stupidly powerful stuff. It makes you feel like a, like a big boy. And that's always good. So, yeah, we'll get the Mineral Seam, I think. But I need some money first. So I guess what we'll do is we'll attack Marienburg. And using the spoils, we will build a uh, a Mineral Seam. Oh, we also want some more technology. I guess go Ogre Throng. That will unlock a second camp if we want one. Cheaper upkeep for all ogre units sounds good. Extra speed for Noblar trappers is good too, because the Noblars can't. Ooh, hang on. Firebellies. Ooh. And that's extra rank for firebellies. Oh, it's hero capacity plus three for firebellies. Jeez. That's huge. We could get a ton of them. Yeah, let's go for that. Let's go for the ogre throng. Raveling horde. You know what? I did, I did say this would be great for us to have a second camp. We can't get a second camp yet, but that will be incredibly useful when we do. And one day we might even do some raiding. <laughs> That's a good point, actually. Uh, raiding stance. That's 25%. Yeah, 25%. So, should have probably done that. But it didn't. I didn't. Uh, this would also be nice to get, actually. Yeah, let's go with the weapon pile. Hopefully we can get some good money from the spoils over there. Uh, but I would like to get to Iron Guts, ideally. Although, I can potentially get to Iron Guts... Here, so actually, I might just get rid of this building entirely. I keep it for now, but to free up space later, because I would much rather, as my melee contingent, have um, uh, the man eater camp uh, chain, because I think man eaters are just better generally. Having some proper mercenaries would be really fun in this area as well. Have a bunch of like our front line just be ogres, dressed in various uh, sort of ensemble from from the empire. That just feels to me like a, a much more interesting option. Although, if I get rid of this, I will earn a bit of money, won't I? I will. So I'll have a bit more cash next turn to spend on these things. Because ideally, I want this and this straight away. Cavalry, great too. But, like I said, I really want some man-eaters and I really want some blood belchers. And the Noblar scrap launch is quite cool too. The more. So there's a few things we want. The tome of fate calls to me, foretelling of a way to elude the maelstrom and enter the realm of chaos. The dying god will roar again. We must prepare. Muster an army that can withstand the terrors you shall face. So remember, we did decide we're not actually doing the main quest. We're just trying to take over the Empire. Okay, we're just trying to eat our way through the Empire. So this is uh, widely irrelevant. You know, we'll see. Maybe we'll we'll change our mind later in the campaign and decide once we've eaten the Empire and can't find any halflings um, that that maybe we should go ahead and just eat that god. You know, we don't necessarily need to cook it. It's fine. So maybe we'll try and compete later, which is going to be incredibly difficult. You can actually lose the main campaign, by the way. If the uh, if all the other factions get the demon souls and stuff first, they can do the final battle. There's It's not like the Vortex where it just goes, oh, hey, do you want to... Do you want to stop the enemy winning? And you can go, ooh, yes, please. And then you, you fight them and stop them winning. There's none of that. Um, <laughs> so you can actually lose. So if we take a while to eat the Empire, 
then we're just going to lose, which is kind of cool. Uh, but this is going to be lovely because that means uh, in a few turns we are going to have... Oh wow, we actually almost have enough money for the buildings I wanted. Um, hang on, where are we? Yeah, only four grand, right, for all of them. Okay, cool. Um, but yeah, so in a bit, a bunch of rifts will open and there'll be a bunch of demons will spew out and we can we can see what it's, what it's like eating a demon. It's going to be incredibly frustrating because as soon as we kill them, they're gonna they're gonna be banished back into the realm of chaos, which means we're gonna have to eat them alive, you know. Which is an interesting, I think, an interesting sort of uh, uh, culinary quandary. So I can't wait to see how how boys handle that. Uh, I'm certainly I'm certainly interested in finding out the the results of that that particular experiment. All right, let's go ahead and get Lookout Noblars, I think. Actually, I do want to get extra ingredients, so we'll do Curse of Andra here. Extra ingredients, then we'll start getting the various uh, Noblars to buff his stats. So I'm going to start by attacking uh, Hans here. It looks like it looks like they've left Marienburg to its own devices, which is incredibly stupid of them. Um, because it means I can just take all of this stuff over, which is marvellous. So Pyrrhic victory. I will lose a couple of Noblars with this. Oh, we'll give the Banner of the Internal Flame to um, to our Butcher of Beasts instead. Sounds good. So, yeah, okay. Uh, I mean, I can just do this and lose a couple of Noblars. Oh, and a bunch of Ogres. I guess we're fighting it. Just... I've got to say, Auto Resolve does not like Ogres. It really doesn't. Though I'm kind of glad, because it means if you're not playing as the Ogres, you can skip fighting them more often. <laughs> Which is good, because they will just walk straight through your entire army and kill everything. Uh, no questions asked. So it's it's nice that you can rely on auto resolve there, but uh, not when you're playing against them. So I guess we're fighting it. And this is going to be incredibly straightforward. Uh, luckily, more is here. So you know the god of death in the perfect spot to lead his folk to the realm of the dead. Okay, in you get, lads. In you get. You guys coming? Oh, you are coming. Can you can you stand still? I was hoping to just have you all eaten by the boar, honestly. That would have been nice. I love this as well. Look at this. Oh, cool. Giant elven blade made out of stone. Crack it in that horrible googly boogly skull. Oh, here we go. Here's some friends. Hey, friend. Yeah, I guess I'll uh, I'll just hit these guys. Just they'll let me. Again, they're gonna let me. They always seem. Oh no. Gorgeous. <laughs> we saved them. Oh, we have to actually activate that. My bad. I always forget we have to activate that. Still great though. Old extra ingredients. Uh, so you're having a bad day, right? Yeah? Oh yeah, he's having a very bad day. Yeah, Angle's having like the worst day. Also, look at this little thing. So this is also a fun thing. We can end the battle now that we've defeated these guys. And then we can attack Marienburg. Which technically gives the reinforcements the advantage here, but that's fine by me, honestly. So we lost nobody, and we got a bunch of money and other such things. Uh, we're going to ransom the captives. So they're dead, because that was the second time we attacked it. And we got a Noblar chef as well. Uh, sorry, a chief. Not a chef, but you can see why I was confused. Uh, Noblars are stupid, but this one has shown the faintest spark of intelligence, so has been promoted above his peers. I guess extra recruit rank for Noblar units, which is fine. And now we can attack Marienburg, where we can have a proper battle, but first... I want... Oh, hang on. Big names have expired. We have the option to pick more. I think this is fine, actually. I think this is good. Or do I want a campaign movement range? That's nice, too. I do really like that. Uh, let's get that one. Let's actually go with wor uh, World Swallower. Sounds good to me. And let's go with the more beasts. Because we haven't been getting any of this stuff at all. We probably should, though. We could go with the campaign movement range one. Let's do that. Come and get it. Scrag the slaughterers committed their surplus meat to the Great Moor. 
He and his army will now enjoy his blessing. Into my and we also have a bit of cash. I don't know why the camera is pointing this way. That's fine. You know. It can do what it wants. I'm, I'm not one to judge. Um, so yeah, let's get this built. Marvelous. And we shall swivel. Uh, so it looks like no one wants to actually pick a fight. They're happy to be at war with us, but none of them want to commit. Even to Uber Strike, that is like... I mean, I guess that's actually quite a good garrison, considering. Though, so, okay, I can kind of see why they don't want to attack with just a stack of swordsmen. Uh, so we will be taking Fort Bergbrez at some point, but... We do need to decide what else we're going to attack after Marienburg. It's, it's kind of annoying that we have to sort of push out in various directions. There's not just like a nice route from one to the next. You know, we have to, we have to double back regardless of which one we pick first. Which is a shame. So, Pyrrhic victory, it thinks we're going to lose someone potentially. Uh, we are... You know what, I will actually just auto resolve this one. Because we're not going to lose any models. You know, any units rather. And we'll get a bunch of replenishment just because it's Scrag's army and they get a bunch of replenishment. Uh, although Emil von Corden is quite close by. I don't think he can actually reach us though, because he made the mistake of running away literally as fast as he could. So I'd say we're pretty good we're in pretty good shape here. So the mangled form of a terrifying scarecrow has spent too long at a more sleeves glow. It was taken from the fields and now is a banner to frighten anything with wings. Sure is. So Grim Duraz we can upgrade something in. Uh, of the yeah, now it's going to wait for the bounty pot. Although, I mean, there's a bunch of stuff here I could upgrade that would be quite nice. Like this one, give us an extra 200 um, gold per turn, as well as putting up <laughs> rewards from uh, from contracts as well. That's quite cheap. Would have been quite nice to get. That's okay. So, let's crack on. Uh, upgrade any settlement to level 5. That should be pretty straightforward. I'm assuming our camps can be upgraded. Well, that's the only thing we can upgrade to tier 5, so... I guess that's what uh, what it's after. Uh, I guess any settlement building. Not any settlement to tier 5, it's any building. So, that, that clears things up mechanically. So, your mightiest may become great engines of war, the home bases of conquering armies that roam far and wide. I'm pretty sure it's supposed to be mightiest, like, settlements or something, but it's not quite sure what to put here because we're ogres. <laughs> so, camps is my suggestion. Um, continue to develop your camp facilities to the fullest extent. Yeah. So we got a bunch of cool stuff. we got a fistful of laurels, which is a one-use uh, bound spell to put up melee attack by 14, leadership by 16, which is very nice. Also get a great skull, which is just armor and spell resistance, and a sword of strife, which is a pretty, pretty common weapon. Yeah, not bad. Not bad. So, Marienburg, we have a Cinnabar mine. I mean, I would love to build a garrison building here, truth be told. And what are you doing here, Rotha? Uh, okay. <laughs> it's a deeply personal answer. But sure, sure. I'm sure you do. Um, so, yeah, Marienburg will leave as is. I mean, it'll, it'll level up. In time, we'll get tier 3 and we'll build a uh, build some walls on it. Until then, let's just destroy what we can. You know, if they take Marienburg back, we'll just take it back again. You know? They take it back, we'll take it forth. It'll go back and forth. It's perfect. So, let's fight this battle, because it looks like... Yeah, we're going to lose quite a lot if we don't. Oh, wow. Look at this. This is stunning. Just gorgeous. Look at all these farms. Oh, the lighting's so good on these. They look amazing. Look at this, yeah, it's a vineyard. Lovely. Absolutely gorgeous. You can tell there's some very wealthy, wealthy folk living in these castles. And the main city. Oh, wow, is it an like, industrial sector? Here's this, like, a. This is just a building site, isn't it? Obviously, if you're going to build an area, you have to start with a giant statue. Of Sigma, you know. But God, it's so cool. Beautiful details here. Absolutely stunning. Oh, this is actually... Yeah, this is the same map. This is the same map as that that um, other one we were on in... Uh, was it Middenheim? Yeah, it was Middenheim. The one with the river. We're just attacking from a different direction. 
and it's less developed. So actually, this area, judging its location across the river, I think this is where, if it was a higher tier settlement, this is where the final capture point would be. It would be over there. And they'd install cliffs along this entire edge of the settlement through some kind of magic, I presume. But yeah, that's really cool. So you can actually see that that is under construction. Oh, this is so cool. Just stunning. Really is amazing. Really cool stuff. So, uh, let's push through this palisade and start murdering folks, shall we? Hungry. That's the spirit. So you guys... There, you guys over there. Who else we got? Ah, and then you lot as well. I mean, that's a good enough split. Yeah, that'll do. Okay. Here you go. Here you go. And here you go. Done. It's not that complicated, commanding the ogres. <laughs> it really isn't. And in fact, let's send you around the edge. It looks like they didn't dedicate many defences to this side because they couldn't see that we had our units of gorgers here. So they have definitely understocked this area. Which, uh, yeah, it can't be helped, really. Can't really be helped. <laughs> Don't use more. <laughs> kind of. Kind of do. Yeah, you guys can keep pushing on that way. You guys are getting there eventually, I'm sure. Yeah, we keep keep going, guys. Keep going. Yeah, you guys are doing great. Um, I guess we will. I don't know. Scrag can take the heat. That's fine. Okay, let's jump on top of these guys. It does look like we did catch these guys a bit out of words, so those pistoliers are now getting absolutely butchered. Gorged upon, you might say. Excellent. Oh, and you guys have really just, like, pushed through everything, huh? Excellent. And you guys can push up over there. And you are coming back around. You keep pushing it this way. I guess I'll slow the enemy down. Is that worth doing? <laughs> Why not, right? Why not? Okay, so that's going well. And they're sneaking around the back. They are completely surrounded. And you guys aren't doing anything right now. So, um... Let's wipe out these crossbowmen. And... Kaboom. Yep, yep. That'll do it. Not even overcasting it. Not even overcasting it. Not even bothering. Alright, it's been a little now. We get it so often as well. We can use this so often. Alright, we should capture that in a second, and that will just collapse. So. Yeah, that's good news. Okay, that's all good news. Uh, more of this, I suppose. Ah, uh, there we go. Now this guy's screwed. Oh, you're not doing. You're not doing fine, but you should be. You should be moving. And or grooving. Oh, check out this. How cool is that? God, I love the little details you can find, like within the cities. And they still have the balloons. Like the balloons don't seem to be active anymore, which is a big pity. This is a detail I loved, absolutely adored about the old Empire battle maps. So the, the balloons were actually a signalling system. So these little balloons were all over the old like Warhammer 1 and 2 Empire battle maps. They were really, really cool. Because what would happen is every time you walk your, your units down a street, the balloons would launch into the air. So the defenders would be able to see what streets you were in. So it gave this impression that actually there is, you know, there is some, some like, in-universe reason that the enemy is sort of able to, um, you know, sort of uh, uh, command its troops with with some efficiency. They, they knew where you were in the confines of their city, which I thought was really cool. It was a really interesting touch. So the balloons are still here in memory of that, but that actual system doesn't exist anymore, which I think is a pity. 
Because I think having all these balloons, like, dotted around would just be a really amazing detail. Especially in such, like, complicated, just, you know, elaborate, beautiful cities like this. To have those additional details. Because, I mean, they're still here. This part of the scenery. But, still. It was it was a gimmicky thing. It's it's completely non-essential. But I, I liked it. So, decisive victory. Alright. There goes some more money, and everything else. Let's occupy this. Wolfgang Umbodigan is now dead. The Umbodigans were the uh, were the folk. They were the, the sort of, I guess, the tribe of barbarians prior to the Empire that Sigmar was a part of. He was the, uh, uh, at the start of his sort of rise um, to, you know, become the Emperor. He was the he was the son of the chieftain of the Umbodigans. And uh, it was it was while it was before he was made chieftain that he saved. Uh, God, who was it? I've forgotten the bloody dwarf's name now. But it was the High King of the Dwarfs at the time. But, uh, yeah, he was an Umbarajan. So there you go. That's where that name comes from. Or Umbarajan. Or something. I don't I don't have a monopoly on pron like pronunciation for that word. Uh, so, you know, say it how you want. Uh, that's how I've chosen to. <laughs> anyway. Uh, meat reserves. Meat reserves. Meat reserves. Whirling stump blades. Yeah. Uh, no, let's... So there's ogre bulls, which are rubbish. Noblars, which we're probably going to have in small amounts. Maybe. Okay, iron guts of man-eaters. So this will be for the elite infantry that we will definitely have. Uh, the extra ammunition and missile strength for things like lead belchers and noblars, scrap launchers and iron blasters, that sort of thing. I don't think we necessarily need the bonuses. The battles will be over before we, we can use that ammo and we use... The ammo from these are such a great distance that those minor buffs to missile strength aren't really going to be noticed in the grand scheme of things. Because generally, if you hit something with a cannonball, it dies. So, you know, it dying even more is irrelevant. So I find these are always a bit meh. You know, accuracy, I think, would be, like, better. Um, that would be more useful than just more damage. But anyway, let's go with best eaters. This will have the biggest uh, impression on our army in future. Fine. Not now, of course, because we're still relying on these rubbish My ogre bulls. And actually, for this army in particular, we're probably just going to be going with a billion Great. gorges, aren't we? It is kind of hard to say what we'll end up with, but gorges will probably be a fairly chunky... The more. Fairly chunky number of, uh, of our army. It's really hard to say, I suppose. So, do I want to build more Ah, here we go. This is what I want. Uh, although we do have a bunch of other upgrades we can do, so we can get to the Gorgeous building here and get some Hunters. Hunters are pretty cool. I do like Hunters. Oh, there's also the Stone Horns. There are some very cool units, I've got to say. So we'll go for that first. And then we'll go for the Income building. That's extra camp growth, which, you know, can't really sniff out. Also puts up recruitment capacity, which is very useful too. Uh, so it does look like... Folk are starting to come in and attack other spots. Delbers, we have not bothered to build a garrison building on it. Uh, it would take two turns. It would take too long anyway. So, obviously, Scrag will have to circle back and lay waste to all of these um, upstarts. But that's okay. We'll just wipe out one faction at a time. When it comes to wipe out these factions, then fine. We'll, we'll take over what they take from us, and then the rest of their territory. It, it doesn't matter. It's all good, as long as we're eating. What they're basically doing is bringing us food. Alright, they're going, oh, it's an ogre camp. We'll, we'll repopulate it. We will fill up, we'll fill up this settlement with food again for when Scrag comes back. Okay, that's, that's the plan. Also, yet another, uh, uh, landmark from Warhammer 1 quest battles. So the Ancient Dragon Cave. Now this is a beautiful way to tie in, um, this landmark with, with the new stuff in the game. So the Ancient Dragon Cave, simply known as the Ancient Dragon Cave, it was once home to an infamous drake said to have come from the Far East. The creature has not been seen in eons. The fact there's a giant skull there means that maybe it's dead, but uh, who knows. That could be. For all we know, this could be the site of, uh, of the, the, the death of one of the sort of missing uh, Cathayan dragons, you know? Because they're not all accounted for. So you never know. And I think that's a fun thing that they put that there. Just just enough to make you go, ah, I have a theory. And that's kind of the best stuff with Warhammer lore. When they just sort of 
give you the 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 ingredients to come up with your own ideas of how stuff is going. I like it. Uh, the beast with 13 hearts, huh? That feels like too many hearts. Feels a lot too many. Uh, so a hunter came by and dropped a big old carcass at your door. Uh, boss, ain't seen nothing like it. It looks kind of like a sabre tusk, but twice as big. When the butcher cut it open, it weren't right inside. It's got 13 hearts, he says. Good eating in that, yeah. Uh, is it? Is this like a help it abomination or something? What? What is this? Because 13, obviously, is the, you know, that's the, the number of Skaven, right? It's the, their sacred number, essentially. Um, so, like, yeah, that's really weird. I wonder what this is. But it seems they found something Skaven-related, I suppose. <laughs> so, put the arse in a pot. Or, allow the budget to experiment. 4,000 experience. Which, oh my god, I just love this. Can I just say how much I love these new, like, event interfaces? Because it actually arms you with the information you need to make a decision. Just so often, in the first two games, it'd be like, make a choice. It's like, hey, based on what? But now it's just like 4,000. Well, how much is that? Oh, I can see how much I need to level up. So, cool. Um, it's not actually that much. Not actually that much. I mean, they give us a level and a bit. You know, level and a half, basically. Um, but that won't last that long. This this turn, you know, 50% cooldown for spells. Is that just for Falgan? Or is that is that a faction-wide thing? Because that's pretty cool. If we could just blast spells that quickly. So I think we'll put the hearts in a pot. I think we'll put the hearts in a pot. I think this will be more exciting. Though it don't matter how the beast ended up so weird. We ain't let good uh, meat go to waste. Get those hearts cooked sharpish. Then we'll get them in the tribes' guts. So yeah, I assume it's some uh, molder experiment or something. Uh, so we can actually go for this treasure as well, which I'm going to. So uh, we have a bit of a problem over there. Don't worry about it. So, research the following technology. Tribal gathering. The wives. Which one's tribal gathering? Tribal gathering. <laughs> Way over here. Alright, cool. We'll get there eventually. It's fine. So, we'll do that. Technology must be researched before any ogre camps can be built. I guess it just assumed that at this point we would have done ogre throng by now, but we've been really dragging our feet for that one. Talisman of preservation is great, though. 17% ward save is no joke. So, the Risen Isle. Uh, as you make your way across the sea, the ocean mists suddenly part to reveal an island, which by all accounts is uncharted, even by the great map right himself. High spars of rock jut from sea like spikes in a trap that has ensnared some prey. Indeed, a wrecked ship lies impaled on the small island's coastline. Its crew seem to have moved into the interior, along with any valuables that may have been on board. Let's explore the island. A perilous island it may be, but the shipwreck might have once carried a lucrative cargo. And here we are fighting a bunch of Dark Elves for some reason, which, um... This was a common thing in, in Warhammer 2 as well, between updates. So I'm, I'm not on the uh, launch candidate or the release copy of the game. I'm pretty sure this has been addressed now, I think. Uh, this is one of the things that's been addressed by that. But yeah, it was really common for some reason. Uh, it was really common in sort of uh, pre-release versions in sort of like Warhammer 2 DLC and things, that, that ocean battles would just turn into fighting a random Dark Elf army. I don't know why, but it seems to just be a common bug somewhere with the... I don't know, it's weird. It, that always seems to happen. But uh, here we are, fighting Dark Elves, and I'm going to take the opportunity to do it, because guys, Dark Elves are in this game. Technically. At least for the moment. <laughs> it's good enough for me. Let's do it. And so the reason why, um, as well, I, I think that this is a bug, rather than like an intentional means to try and mix up um, the sort of foes that you would fight at sea, is because I'm pretty sure when we get to the other end of this battle, the pop-up is going to say um, how the Vampire Admiral opened its broadsides of cannons at us and all the rest of it. So it's, it, yeah. So the, the text isn't necessarily going to match this newfound diversity of, of enemy types. So that's why. That's why I say that. Oh, and you're just in the front line. You shouldn't be. Let's get you up and around, maybe. Uh, you're probably going to get spotted fairly soon, but that's okay. Uh, we should be able to get the back line in a hurry. But it'll have to be, it'll have to be a, a, an incredible hurry. Also, Dark Elves do look fantastic with the new lighting engine. They do look really good. 
I like it. I like it a lot. Even though the, uh, I've got to say, this uniform doesn't exactly pop, does it? But still, it's something. Oh, you start throwing... Throwing whatever it is you throw. Are you throwing javelins? What are you throwing? I don't even know. I guess it doesn't matter much. <laughs> Alright, you get stuck in. And uh, you guys get stuck in equally. Thank you. Now we're going to crush you. Wow, we are taking some damage. Where's Troll Guts? Well, Tooth Crack is probably a good idea too. Oh, no, don't run out of the way. Oh, I was having fun then. <laughs> oh, well, we're in the back line anyway. Alright, now it's Troll Guts. Let's get it. Cool, Gorger. Troll Guts is. It costs 14. Jeez. It's a lot of money. Not a lot of money. The other thing. Winds of magic. Which is both be money. It's magic money. It's magic money. Not to be confused with magic mind. That's very different. Now you guys get stuck in. And you will push in. So can you give yourself troll guts now? No, not there yet. Alright. Well, we've already won. I guess I guess we'll just end the battle, because I don't think uh, that's anything that replenishment can't solve. Okay, hey, good. Uh, so we're going to go with money. Because I like money. Money. I like money. Now, so they're going to sail away and disappear because they're part of an event. Haha. <laughs> oh, we've gone to the cannibal totem. I like these. And we've got materials at sea. Extra income faction wide for buildings, 10%. And construction cost goes down by 30% for all buildings. That's fantastic. And like I said, look at this. Again, Vampire Admiral being mentioned. So it's, it's not supposed to be. Um, dark Elves, that's just a weird I don't know, something some weird bug, it's it's strange but, I enjoy it I enjoy it, so before you can set foot on the island, you are set upon by Vampire Admiral, who had arrived there just before you and was bolstering his forces with the reanimated corpses of the ship wrecked to dead, rotting amongst the rocks after defeating the undead freebooters, you looted the vampire's moored galleon before claiming all the salvage on the island yourself so the cannibal totem we got as well and materials at sea is just fantastic. During your antics on the high seas, you acquired a bounty of lumber that will enable the rapid construction of buildings when returned to port. Yeah, the Cannibal Totem's cool. Cannibal Totem is blessed by the Great Moor and bestows power on those who would devour the strong under the eye of their god. Uh, so, can you get back to... back to land in a hurry? I certainly hope so. Uh, Marienburg, we're not going to try and upgrade because Emil von Corden might go ahead and grab it. It might actually be quicker to go to Marienburg and then up to, uh, I don't know, Brokewater? Maybe. We'll see. Uh, wearing some sounds nice, but I do also want to make sure our man-eaters are as good as they can be when we finally get them. Um, anyway, we'll, we'll need to deal with, uh, Sir Gov Fowerback over there as well at some point. Um, and Karak Ziflin. And Karak Asgaraz we can upgrade. I'll do Karak Ziflin, because it's actually got a trade resource. Which will benefit us. Because we do have a, we do have trade. Yeah, we do have trade going. Could we get some more, maybe? Yeah, it looks like the rebel lords of Nanyang want to trade. It looks like the western provinces want to trade. Uh, hello, Jiao Min. Let's trade, buddy. Let's trade. What are you going to give me for it? Brilliant. Thank you, Jiao Min. And uh, Grayling as well, I think is a good idea. Um, we seem to be getting on with all of the all the chaos. Yes. All the chaos lords right now. Not that exactly chaos lords, but uh, you know what I mean. So we actually have quite a few trade deals going. I like it. I like it. We are earning 900 from trade. Which, okay, not great, but it'll do. It'll do. We got more feast tents built. Or do we want to start doing the slaughter master's table? We can get more butchers. Maybe? Or we could unlock uh, gluttony. I'm not even sure what the what gluttony does. That ability. I'm not even sure. I'm not sure I've ever got that before. Uh, so we are being attacked over here. Valmir von Rolkov has attacked Middenheim. Which, uh, I mean, it's not a bad garrison here, but I'm just not sure how well it'll do in the open field I refuse. against this army that we can't necessarily see. Although I guess I can see it if I do this. Um, 
So they do outnumber us. They do outnumber us. I think this would be quite even, actually. I think this would be quite even. I think this could be quite a tricky one. Mostly because this guy doesn't have any spells, which is obviously very silly. I wanna. So, you know, there is that. Uh, so that'll do. That'll do for the turn. We'll let them attack us. I think a siege defense of Middenheim would be far more interesting. And if they do happen to take it, then fine. We'll just take it back from them when it's their turn to be eaten. Okay, so I was going to go back to Marienburg because I assumed that Emil von Corden would do something. But it seems like he's not doing anything. So I think I'll just go ahead and attack him. And Brokewater's garrison can join him. I think we'll do fine. Uh, they have a lot of crossbowmen. An awful lot of crossbowmen, which are a bit of a weak link for us. Definitely. You know, with our low armor, crossbowmen can do a lot of damage. But, yeah, I think I think we can handle it. Maybe. We'll certainly give it a go. I think it'll be fun. Uh, we are going to get extra speed, though, because we have so, so much meat right now. So much. So we're going to use some of it to get the extra speed, mass, and charge bonus. So we can get in there nice and quickly. Should be a lot of fun. But it's going to be a lot of fun next episode. I know. I'm a cheeky one. Uh, so there's still, uh, God, like two or three more days of that competition on Nexus.gg. If you go to Nexus.gg slash Janet and you buy Warhammer 3 from me, uh, it won't cost you anything extra. At least it shouldn't, but, you know, regional price differences and all that. Like, you know, you know how commerce is weird. But anyway, um, it shouldn't be any more money. And if it is, it'll be negligible. And it'll, it'll give me a chance at uh, winning a big prize pool. So it really is the easiest way to help out the channel. And if you can't be bothered to do that, then fair enough. I'm not your dad. Bye.